The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Boy, my voice is actually as strong as it's been all week today. I don't know why, but it's doing okay today. Okay, let's take a look at something that's really important, folks. I posted a chart here, weekly chart of the high-yield bonds, ETF. That means a junk bond. Okay, now junk bonds became very popular when Mike Milken graduated from uh, Wharton Business School. He took a job with uh, Drexel Burnham Lambert, I believe, in 1973. And in 1974, he was transferred to Beverly Hills, where he ran the department for high-yield bonds. They were known as junk bonds. What Milken did was to get people to understand that these were high-yielding bonds. They weren't junk. They were high-yielding. And from that, that's how they moved uh, the markets around for quite a bit. What happens is it was a very thin market when they got started. It got bigger and bigger as real estate started to boom in California. And what happened was Drexel Burnham was basically the whole market on those things. If you want to know how they made their money, read the book called The Den of Thieves by James Stewart. Stewart's on uh, CNBC all the time. He's a Wall Street Journal reporter. But he wrote that book, and it is word for word what's happening there. If you look real close at the building, on the back side of that building that you can't see was my office. But anyway, that was on the Rodeo and Wilshire is where the, uh, where the office was. But look at this chart, folks. This is a weekly, and you notice right here, you see this? We're getting ready to start to break down. This is not a good sign, folks. We're going to blow this up so you can see it. We actually took out the lows this week of that low right there. So we are starting to move lower, as you can see. This is where we are bouncing a little bit today. I saw uh, earlier, but I, I can think we can see what's happened. There was the there was the break, and now we are getting ready to see how much uh, of a rally we're going to get. Okay, let's get back to the bonds. Okay, because I uh, I also wanted to mention here. Here is Arms. We had two um, IPOs come out this week, and uh, it opened at 55, went to 69. Now it's at 51. Now, that's not a good sign. Everybody that bought this thing the first two days is now underwater. I think it's the same thing with that other one called uh, Instagram. No, it's not Instagram, but it's something like that. Anyway, let's move on here and talk about the bonds here for just a second, and then we'll, we'll move in here and talk a little bit about stocks. Here is the bond market. I posted this last night, and I said this is where the fat lady has to sing. You can see we have the big A, B, C, D coming in here at uh, 116 even. The low was 115.23. We're now at 117, so it's moved a full handle. We expected this to be a rally, and so far, that's what it is. Now, if this market is really bearish, and I think it is, look at the last time we had a move. You see that move that we had right there? What we want to do is to see if that's all it's going to do at that spot right there. That's the market repeating itself over and over again. So watch this spot. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the last high right back here. That led to this ABCD down. And I'm going to draw the line down from the low to the high and see where the 382 comes in. And the 382 comes in right here. This measures to 117.17. This measures to 118. So this is the area right here where you want to watch this, okay? Because that is where the 382 comes together with the uh, repeating number, what we call the harmonic number. In other words, the market moves. Uh, this one happens to be two points. So two points off of this is going to take you right up to this level anyway. We're only half a point away right now. This has been a big move. You see, that, that's been a pretty big move. So this is the key because if this is, in fact, the real major bottom in bonds, which certainly could be, uh, I, you know, I don't know if it is or not, but if we start getting really strong, getting up in here, then it's got a chance to rally more, folks. But this, this market has all the earmarks of the guy in the, all the horror movies, which I never watch those things, the guy with the chainsaw 
or the, the sickle that comes right behind you all the time, that's what it looks like. Every day I watch the news on CNBC or Bloomberg to get the flavor of what they're looking at, whether it's the IPO, just to get a feeling of if the market's scared or whatever. And there is nobody scared of the bond market. You know, and I they say that lower it goes, more value it is because it'll yield more. Yeah, well, reminds me of the old story from uh, reminiscences of a stock operator. The guy says, how are you doing? Well, he said, uh, I had a really good buy. He says, what was it? He said, it was good buy boat, good buy house, good buy car, good buy wife. And that's what it'll end up being. So be really careful, folks. This is a market that really looks like it wants to go a lot lower that means higher interest rates. Look where we've gone, folks. We've gone from 2% to 2.5%, um, 3% on mortgages to 8% in a matter of eight or nine months. And you know that in our my little subdivision here, which is 80 homes, this is the first time since they've been built that there's not been a home for sale in our whole neighborhood. Not one. Usually there's five or six, four or five anyway. Nothing. There hasn't been one for sale for six weeks. And my real estate guy said, that's a good sign. And I came back and I started thinking. I said, nope. I said, just a lack of buyers. Nobody wants to sell, but there's also no buyers. So I don't know if it means anything or not. But uh, anyway, that's what we're watching here in the bonds. So let's uh, pay, pay attention to this. And I think we've got to d double check something here at TFNN. And we've got Jeff from Philadelphia on the line. Jeff, what can I do for you, my friend? Uh, hi, Larry. Um, so I have a question for you. Uh, sometimes I notice uh, when I have a particular trade on and I have a target and the price is approaching the target, it comes very close, but then bounces away. And then sometimes, uh, you know, it bounces away for a little bit and it come back and actually hit the target. And other times it'll continue in the opposite direction and not come back and hit the target. So I, I think the reason why uh, sometimes it gets close and, and bounces away and it comes back down and hits it is because people are getting out a little bit early. You know, other people are looking at the same trade I am and it's getting mm. close, so they say it's close enough and they get out and that, you know, forces it to go the other way, but then their orders get exhausted and it comes back and hits the target. But my uh, question is, um, do you have some kind of a tell or some, you know, what, something that you look at that says, oh, this is just bouncing away from the target because it got close and people are getting out early. It's going to turn around and come back and hit it. Or it's close, but no, this this failed, never actually hit the full target. It's going to continue away and not come back. Do you have any way of distinguishing you know, between those two possibilities? Well, Jeff, today is your lucky day. I have in my power the way to determine whether the market's going to hit the exact high or the exact low each day. It's part of my advanced training course. It's uh, thirty thousand dollars for one year, now refundable. Oh, 30, it went up yes. the price. <laughs> it's thirty thousand. Well, I, you know, demand. I've got more demand than I can supply, <laughs> so prices are going higher. But it's thirty. Uh, uh, Sarah just told me that we've sold our last one today. Jeff, that's called trading, my friend, and it's all based on probability. And I know what you're going through, but you can't do a darn thing about it. We just don't know. You're asking for the future. And I have to get a crystal ball for that one, my friend. Okay? Okay, thanks. You bet, brother. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Keep up the good work. Your charts are fabulous. We'll be right back, folks. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look here at the S&P. I've got the December uh, up here. You see we've gone from 4507 uh, on Tuesday, uh, excuse me, on Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, we're down to, we hit a low of uh, 4365. Now, you'll notice here, I, I put the arrow, there's the 382 from that level, that comes in at 4423. If this is correct, and we're just getting a, um, by the way, that DCB means dead COVID bounce, folks. C is for COVID. Anyway, look what's happened here. Now, there, I always say that when you see the first A, B, C, D in a bear market or bull market, you want to buy it. And there it is right there. You can see the A, B, C, D. There's your 382 right up here. So now we're seeing a little bit of a move down. My fondest dream is that we keep doing this and keep doing this. And then sometime between now and Monday, we're going to hit 4423 because that is the 382 from the whole move down off of this high right here. So that tells you this is the one you want to be watching really close. Let me tell you the reason why. If by some stretch of the imagination we can get above this, this could have been a major bottom down in here. I don't believe that it is. Everything in that I watch technically tells me that that's not the case, but that's what we're watching. So you see, as we're looking right now, we just completed that up there at 43.97. The high was... Uh, uh, 43.99, so it missed it by one point. So we really can't count that. That would make that one a failure, wouldn't it? Man, eh, close enough, I guess. Anyway, so here's what we're looking right now, and now we have a market moving down. Okay, so we're still here's the open down here. So we're way above the open. That's really good. So what you want to be watching on a short-term basis is to go back to your low right here, and connect to see where the 61% retracement comes in, and it comes in right about here. 4379 that's about four points from where we are right now now if this is good this is going to hold it right here but if we start getting below this point this is all the rally you're going to get folks and it's not going to be pretty here today and you think not pretty today you should see the market without makeup when it opens on sunday night or monday because they are going to tear it a new uh, you know what because there's just no rally in this this is what this look at this folks we drop 150 points, and all we can do is a 30-point rally. 
And that's right, you know, double the 15 point rally that we talk about, that 30 points, six times the harmonic number of five. So that's what we're watching. It's very, very important that we can hold this level here at this 437. Uh, four points away. In fact, we're in the air right now. We got Jeff Huge coming on, so we'll see if this is going to hold. But that's what we're paying attention to here today. It's very, very important. That's my two cents worth. Okay, I don't. I think that's about all I can do. Let's move over here to uh, the market that has been going wacko crazy, uh, and that is this British pound. You'll see here that we made another new low again. Get this up on the weekly, so you'll be able to see it. That it's broken down below that. 61% retracement by quite a bit now. Okay, so we're making a new low today. Get it up here. See, it's not much of a new low, but it's a new low. So you takes the low out the other day of just a few pips, and it rallied again. So it's trying to make a bottom in here, but right now, nothing in sight. Looking at this on the daily, <clears throat> you'll see it just keeps cascading down. There's that 618 we're looking at. So we're still moving lower, folks. So... There's no really any way to get in this market without uh, risking a little bit, but it's still, I see no pattern in here that's going to give us any idea of where we could possibly be. So it tells us we're going lower. Look how many days we've been down. Whew, that's a lot of days down. This one only gets a two-day rally and then collapses. The euro, on the other hand, and on the other hand, we'll take a look at the euro. Here's the euro. Now, the euro made another low. You see the low here on the 20th? It made another low last night by two pips. And I'm going to go to the weekly chart because I want to show you how important that is. There it is again. You see it? There was that yesterday. There is today. Made a lower low by four points, okay? And that's what you want to be looking for, okay? So that's it. I think the euro is making a pretty good bottom in here. And I, the good part, if you get below here, you don't want to have anything to do with it. Just like when bonds broke 117.31, uh, you don't want to stand in front of that. That's for sure. Okay, let's just take a quick look now on the hourly chart to see how we look. Okay, now you'll notice that we did take a lower low out. We made a lower low here, rallied up, and took a lower low out. So we tried it several times now. It still hasn't broken down. But this is a Friday, folks, in a down week. Man, it's going to be hard for the euro to rally to look good on the close. It really is. So we're probably going to close somewhere in this area right here. So you could come in Monday morning and you could open below here. And boy, if that's the case, get out of Dodge because this is a market that's real money. This is not one of the funny markets like we got with the S&P and, and some of these other commodities. This is real cash money from country to country. So it's going to mean a great deal if we get below that. You notice that I have my my limit minder in right here at 106.20 to see if that's going to be the case. I bought here on this little pullback here just to, to see if it's going to hold. And what I'm doing now is I have my stop at break even because it's up just slightly. So if it gets below that on a Friday, I'm not going to hold it. And I've got to have at least a 50 pip lead on this or I will not hold this over the weekend. It's just not, uh, it's just not conducive to good risk control. So, that's what I'm paying attention to as I'm looking here with the with the British pound, uh, the euro dollar, euro the euro versus the dollar, it's the euro currency, not euro dollars, euro dollars or U.S. dollars abroad. All right, now let's move over to uh, look at one other one that looks relatively interesting here. Hold on a second, I want to get this gold chart up because this is one we were looking at when we were on the air just the other day here. Let's get this blown up so we can see it. And I believe that was a four-hour we were looking at. There it was right here. You'll notice that we went up. There was a 786 when we were on the air here on, uh, on Wednesday. It was trading right there at 1968. We went from 68 all the way down to 35. So that's pretty close. That's 30. Uh, 30 wow, 34. That's <laughs> Well, it's almost 30 bucks, and the harmonic number is 32, so it's pretty close. You'll see here on the pullback get this out of the way we didn't quite make the seven eight percent retracement on the pullback we missed it by a huge amount 50 cents and now we've bounced back right here this is a full day bounce so what we want to do watch to see what that full day bounce is going to be because if and i give this a big if we've hit the 382 here one two three four times and we're sitting there right now at uh, 1955. The only way that I would hold gold short, 
over the weekend, because I don't like overnight wet risk, is to, if we close below the 382 substantially, it's like somewhere down in here around 1940. If we're down there, then, yep, I've got a nice lead. And so I would say I will stay with it over the weekend. Otherwise, nebahachi, not going to happen. Okay. All right. Let's pay attention here to the time here. See when our break's coming up. And I think it's in about uh, 40 seconds. Jeff Huge will be our break. Next week, we're going to have, I believe on Monday, we're going to have a uh, Joe DiNapoli. I'll also be doing Basil Chapman's show, I believe, at uh, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. All right, on Monday. We'll be right back. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights. gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insight on the line. Hey, Larry, how are you doing? Just living the dream, baby, on the green side of the grass. You've got a chart up here with point and figure. Man, I used to do that years ago, but I can't even remember how to do the points and figures when I see chart like this. It has to do with volume, doesn't it? Well, it, it is purely price, believe it or not. There's no time, no volume. It's all about price change. And, uh, you know, it's an arcane method of technical analysis that 
One of my former mentors, a fellow by the name of Alan Shaw, was very, very good at. Alan wrote a book on it. And, uh, you know, as a result, uh, having worked with him at Citigroup for a number of years, I, I read his book and I became familiar with it. And, you know, there's a service that I subscribe to called StockCharts.com that has a, a nice platform for doing uh, point and figure analysis. And so, you know, I kind of plug some of my own uh, adjustments into their charts and, and try and oh, yeah. arrive at some rational conclusion. And, you know, what I'm learning about uh, crude oil here is that uh, price action suggests it can go much higher. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you're saying 114 a barrel? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's what the point and figure analysis would suggest. But, you know, I think you can look at some fundamentals, Larry, that uh, really suggest that that's the case as well. WTI crude inventories in the U.S. fell to just 46 days last week. That compares to the long-term average of around 65 days. And it's actually the lowest level that we've seen in four decades. Meanwhile, wow. the month of August saw world oil demand post a new all-time record high. So... You know, it should be no surprise that we've been seeing uh, WTI crude prices, you know, pressing up above $90 a barrel these last few days. And my suspicion is that supply and demand imbalance that exists out there uh, will have a lot to do with what happens to prices going forward. My suspicion is 114 is just the first rung on the ladder, and there will be many more that it could climb thereafter. Wow. Okay. I Guess I'll have to get myself an electric car. Can't afford it. Anyway, here's I got another point in figure for the U.S. dollar, too. This is cool. Go ahead. And, you know, the interesting thing here, Larry, is that uh, normally commodity prices are inversely uh, correlated to uh, the U.S. dollar, right? Because uh, as the price of the dollar goes up, then the commodity should go lower because commodities priced in the dollar. But here we see uh, the trend in the U.S. dollar moving up in conjunction with the commodities themselves. That suggests that this is not this is not a currency related issue. This is a pure supply and demand change. And one of the reasons I believe that the dollar continues to move up is because it's a safe haven. And a lot mm -hmm. of people are worried about uh, the dollar because of the US debt. Well, take a look at some of the other countries out there. <laughs> it's a oh. lot worse, you know. It's yeah. maybe the cleanest uh, shirt in the laundry, put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that, that's for sure. Okay, let's take a look here at the 10-year Treasury yields. Boy, I'll tell you, that, this is scary when you see rates go like this. I mean, this is, uh, this is a parabolic move. We call this a breakout in technical analysis. The 10-year mm -hmm. Treasury yield has now broken out on the upside above that prior, you know, 435 level that had been in place going back to October of last year. And mm -hmm. this bullish inflection, if it is sustained, projects at least a small measured move to around 467, then 495, and finally up to around 540. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I would actually direct your attention to the lower panel. The lower panel in the chart actually suggests that uh, the move index, which is the move is kind of like the, the VIX for, for bonds. It, it measures the volatility of the bond market. And if we take a look at uh, where the move index has been in the past when bond yields peaked, it's been above 130 percent. Well, where is it today? It's about 106 percent. So I wow. heard a lot of commentators lately saying that, well, don't worry about it. Every time the uh, yields have moved up like this, they've reversed sharply lower. Well, every time that's happened, the move index has been above 130 percent. So we got a ways to go, I think. And in my opinion, yeah. we're going to see that 467 in the not too distant future. And it would not surprise me to see 495 sometime in the next six months. At the end of the day, I think a bump of, you know, 30 to 50 basis points in the 10-year uh, Treasury yield could have a very, very negative impact on the stock market. Yeah, just for outlook, I would think. But, you know, that's just the way the things run here. Let's take a look at here at another one you've got, which is the rising rates. This is what you're talking about right here. Uh, tell exactly them what you're looking right. at. 10%? Um, this arcane, <laughs> this arcane uh, uh, you know, um, point and figure analysis to arrive at, you know, a conclusion that I don't know when it's going to happen, Larry, but the chart is telling us that 10-year Treasury yields have the potential to rise upwards of 10.5% by 
sometime in the future. I've actually wow. in, engaged in some dialogue with one of my old mentors, uh, uh, Louise Yamada, who is the number one oh, I remember bank, her. Uh, yeah. analyst on Wall Street for, I think, about 10 years of her career. And, you know, I said, Louise, what do you think about this chart? I mean, would you agree that 10-year yield can go? She goes, she goes, I think it could go higher. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, uh, is she, you know, it's going to yeah, take she, some time. It's not going to happen overnight. But, uh, you know, 10-year yields are definitely in a new uptrend, and they could go yeah. a lot higher than most people expect. I used to watch her on TV all the time. How, she's retired now for several years, yeah, right? She is. Because she's got to yeah. be close to my age, right? I mean, she's 55. Uh, you know, you, you never want to talk about age when you're talking <laughs> Especially about Especially with a woman. Right? <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Next question. <laughs> Let's take a look at the next chart, something that we can understand. Investor sentiment. Your Boy, look at there. Still bullish. Oh, my goodness. I noticed on the way down, this was had nothing to do with fear or anything. This was just a normal correction. So what are you looking you know, here? We, we, we've been looking at uh, a cross-section of investors, uh, Larry. And, you know, it doesn't matter who you're talking to, analysts, advisors, investors, traders. Everybody is all bulled up here. And, and, and if I just look at bottom-up EPS revision, Wall Street analysts are more bullish today than at any point in the last 12 months. If I look at investment advisor sentiment, you know, taking a look at the Investors Intelligence Sentiment Survey, Advisors are actually about as bullish as they were at the top of the market back when the NASDAQ complex peaked in November of 2021. Uh -huh. If we look at institutional investors, their buying transactions showed the largest increase in net buying transactions in the month of August since December of 2020. And in fact, it was the biggest percentage gain in the over the course of the past year. And then finally, options traders is measured by the volatility index. Um, it's up a little bit in the last couple of days, but when I made this chart, I think uh, last Friday, um, it was as low as it had been since uh, the NASDAQ topped in 2021. I mean, whenever you get this level of complacency, this broad-based investor competence, and, you know, when the market is near uh, all-time, or not all-time highs, but, you know, recent recovery highs, it tends to historically um, mark a top or a turning point. And I'm, you know, the market actually topped in price back on July 27th, but it seems to me that even with the decline that we've seen a few percentage points to the downside, investors remain very, very bullish here. Okay, listen, we've got to pay a few bills. Stay with us. We'll have Jeff Huge Alpha Insights back in about three minutes, folks. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, we're back with Jeff Hughes, Alpha Insights, looking at market breadth. What are you looking at here? It looks like that magnificent seven. <laughs> wow, it's incredible. On the left side, you got that, and on the right side, you got the banks. Whew. There, there's quite a bifurcation between where the performance exists, uh, Larry. This is looking wow. at the last 12 months uh, through the middle of September. And um, honestly, you know, when we take a look at where the performance is concentrated, it's really in the hands of these seven stocks, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Net, uh, not Netflix, uh, Tesla, Meta, and of course, NVIDIA, right? You know, this is the darling, yep. the, the artificial intelligence, intelligence chips. And, you know, that can be said for the NASDAQ 100. It's these magnificent seven, the growth stocks, the mega caps. This is where, you know, all that bullish sentiment that we just talked about, despite rising oil prices, rising interest rates, et cetera, um, it's all piling into these safe stocks, these mega caps with fortress balance sheets. They're avoiding banks, small caps, value stocks, even mid caps are really not performing that ver that well. In fact, the average stock in the S&P 500 is only up 1.4% over the trailing 12 months. That's not exactly a bull market, in my opinion. And normally, when you're in a new bull market, the stocks that are leading the market are the small cap value junk stocks. You know, the, the stocks that are the riskiest are the ones that would be leading the market off the lows in a new bull market, but in fact, exactly the opposite. In fact, what it looks like is exactly what you would expect when the market is topping. Uh, a very narrow market that everything's concentrated in the highest quality, highest, largest market cap, the safest bets on the, you know, on the street. And so, you know, that really puts a lot of doubt in my mind as to the durability of this market's uh, advance. In fact, we think it topped November 20, or I'm sorry, uh, July 27th, and we think we're in the early stages of the next leg to the downside. Well, I can certainly see why. Let's take a look at the next one, which is your Elliott Wave. Uh, you're, you're, this is what you're just trying to tell us now, that this is a uh, look like we're getting ready for the wave down, which would be the wave five. Is that correct? Or wave three? This is, this is actually just primary wave three, believe it or not. We're still in the very early days, but you know, our preferred Elliott wave count assumes that the October 13th low just marked the bottom of wave one down. Uh, a lot of people are like, are you kidding, wave one? I mean, yeah, it was five waves down, but those were at an intermediate degree of trend. At primary degree of trend, we only completed the first of what will likely be five waves down. And, um, you know, we, we see this kind of tracing out a rare leading diagonal uh a sort of pattern of the expanding variety. It had a lot of nuance to it. And the subsequent primary wave to advance, which we think topped on July 27th, that completed an ABC zigzag corrective waveform, where wave B traced out this broad flat pattern, which made it a little bit difficult to determine what was happening until after we saw this breakout and then we were able to figure it out. Uh, but what we're seeing since, uh, is appears to us to be the early stages 
of primary wave three down. And in fact, the next chart in uh, the deck actually blows up these last four months and takes a really close look at what's going on in the market wow. here. Well, that is, uh, boy, the, boy, like I said to folks today, I said, if you think this is the bottom because we're getting this bounce, I said, this is the most, most pathetic bounces I've seen. <laughs> I mean, we can only, we go down 150 handles and we can only rally 30 handles on a Friday. Wow, I wouldn't yeah, want to be trading, long stocks over the weekend. Yeah, uh, lows of the day right now. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. I see. I, I was hoping that. <laughs> anyway, okay, that's uh, another one that we're watching here. Uh, so I, I agree with this. This is just looks very ominous, in my opinion. Okay. Oh, let's. We got a time. We got a few minutes here for a little commercial. So let's uh, talk a little bit about your newsletter and some of the other things that you have for the folks, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely, Larry. So as you know, I publish a monthly newsletter affectionately entitled Huge Insights, The Big Picture. And uh, we put it out on the first Saturday of each month. That happens to be uh, uh, October 7th will be the next uh, publication. It's the day after the non-farm payroll reports. We like to have that kind of in our rearview mirror when we publish so we don't get blindsided by any big data. But uh, normally what we put in the newsletter is just – kind of the big key macro factors affecting the economy and the, uh, and the stock market. And uh, we, we send that out to everybody every uh, first Saturday of every month. And you can sign up for free at uh, hugeinsights.substack.com. If you like what we're talking about from the big picture, you can actually pay a small amount, $12.50 uh, a month, to get uh, our paid version, which is much, much more expansive. It gives you access to our monthly market forecast, our positioning recommendations. Uh, we also give our paid subscribers a, a weekly report called Alpha Insights Idea Generator Lab, where we detail our top actionable trade idea every week, as well as provide them with updated market commentary. And then we also have some privileged access to interim bulletins, which are usually reserved for institutional subscribers and some quarterly video content. Well, you do a great job. you got a fabulous track record. So, folks, pay attention to what this young man has. You can reach him at www.jwhinvestment.com. And uh, we're going to have you on again really soon, my friend. So I'm glad you're back in the picture again. I know you've been traveling quite a bit, so I hope you stay around with us during the fall and winter months. Of course, you won't see uh, another sunny day there in Minnesota until about June. Is that correct? That's probably right. <laughs> I always joke with uh, Rich Anderson about that. Hey, hey, thanks for joining us today, Jeff. We really do appreciate it. Always a pleasure, Larry. Take care. You bet. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, folks. Always a lot of fun to be watching. Now what we're going to take a look at here is we're going to go back and take a quick look at what's happening with the markets here. Get this out of the way. and We want to get up to where the uh, S&P is because we were just chatting about that. If I can just find it, the only way I'm going to find it is if I do it this way. So look right here, and there's where we are. Oh, my goodness, this is not looking good. Remember, we were just talking about this, folks. Look how we went through this. <laughs> oh, man. This is not really, this is bad. There's your ABCD right at the 382 up here at 96. Now you're 30 handles lower at 69. You went through here like it didn't even exist. This is a, uh, you start, wow, with two hours to go, you'd start taking this out. Whew, shut the front door and raise the rent. Be careful, folks, because this is a, uh, this is really something. This is, look how quickly it does. It took it took uh, what uh, one two three four it took about twelve hours to do this, and we take it all back in one hour. Uh, that that's not a good sign. So it's uh, approaching near the low of the days. Now remember this on the daily, as you'll see here. We were waiting for it. The daily is what we're looking at is down into here. There's your three eight two on the whole thing, which is at forty three thirty. That's where we think we'll at least get to that spot. All right. Another reason for that is this move right here, but that's 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 neither here nor there. Once we get below this, which we're wow, we've already done it. Yeah, we we uh, no, not quite. Well, it needs to get to uh, 43, uh, 66 was the old low last night. So that's what you want to be uh, focusing on to get this back up here to see it. Yeah, see the low last night was at uh, 43.66. Then you had the a, B, C, D, we always talk about it, the mysterious pattern that no one loves except Johnny and I. You got it, Johnny. Hey, let's take a break. 
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, um, this is Larry Pesavento getting ready to sign off. I want to remind our folks that I will be doing the 10 o'clock in the morning show for Basil on Monday, then I'll also be doing my 1 o'clock show. I do believe we're going to have on the 1 o'clock show, uh, Joe DiNapoli will be setting in for us. And as you know, he's been looking for this break and looking for buying opportunities. And it looks like they're going to be coming, folks. So let's keep our powder dry. No matter what happens here, these markets are going to trade and they're going to trade normally. That's the main thing to keep in mind. The fact that if we close below the uh, 4360 level, uh, in the S&P, that sets up the price objective that we've been waiting for that comes in at 43.05 to 43.10. That's down another 50 handles. This market is trading very normally, folks. It's just bearish. That's basically what's wrong. And it'll, you know, be dissipated one of these days and we'll have this humongous rally that no one want to be involved in. And yet that'll be the one that makes it really exciting, folks. The good thing about these patterns is they work most of the time. They don't work all the time. All the time would mean they don't work at all. So what you have to do is make sure when they stop working, get out of dodge, use a stop, whatever you have to do to get out of the trade to protect your backside. No one else is going to do that for you. I can promise you that. You know, this has been a very, very intense week for me, given all the stuff that's happened. But, uh, you know, this is all the excitement that keeps me wanting to do this after 63 years of doing it. Hard to believe. Actually, 64. I started in 59. Wow, 64 years. Whew. 
and I'm only 26. That's pretty good. Anyway, let's make sure we do one other thing is to help your neighbors, folks, uh, no matter who they are, people are needing help. It doesn't have to be money. Maybe you drive someone to the pharmacy or take them to the doctor. Do something, you know, to give back some of the things that the good Lord has given us that uh, we all really appreciate. So keep that in mind. And remember, folks, we're going to see you on the flip side on Monday. So may God bless. 